Well, I tell you what, I'm pretty annoyed. I worked really hard, really hard for an entire week, right through Saturday, right through Sunday, trying to buy myself time for Monday, which is not a great fishing day because it could have been hammered over the weekend. I wanted to do an overnight. It would have been my last overnight of the winter. I'm not going out of my creaky old bones in the freezing cold. And they're given horrible weather. Wayne's down on the south coast, he's beach fishing. He's just texted me. 25 past 10, he's packed up and gone. Wind, rain, cold, miserable. So I'm gonna try and work and finish the shack here. The other thing I wanna do before the rain actually hits, I've gotta take it out on something. I'm gonna try and crop a few of these branches just overhanging on my property here. Two reasons, one, I need to get some more light in this cabin for, uh, for fishing. For filming. So I'm going to crop some of those back, just trim them from the overhangs. The leaves will drop off obviously um, later in the year and I'll get the light in here. But I just want to open up, get a bit more light in here. And also, I'm going to be doing the unboxing of the giant size G stove, which Mike's got for me. We're hoping it's going to fit in this corner. I've got stuff to build in there, plenty to do. I guess the chimney's going to go this side. So I'm going to get up here on the roof. Dangerous at my age, isn't it? Live dangerously, why not? They don't climb on roofs, kids, we used to do it as kids, but kids nowadays mustn't do anything. Cut a hole in the roof, put the chimney up there, and I'm going to get it set up. I'm going to get something out of the day, and I think I'm going to put the fishing on hold for 24 hours. Really annoying, you guys know what it is. You really build yourself up, I really, really fancy going. And now, not only is it the rain, it's going to colour the water, it might put the fish off. I was going to go for Xander. I don't know whether they like coloured water or not. They're visual predators. I'm guessing not. Right. Think positive, let's crack on. That's what it says, and that's what it's got to give. Well, there used to be a film years ago called Fiddler on the Roof, a musical. Now you're going to get a bit of a fiddler on the roof now. He's got a saw, and it won't be musical if I fall down, will it? Or go through. An earwig, clear off. I don't need him up my trouser leg. So I'm just going to nip these branches here that are overhanging. Look how rotten that is. Now I talked about this before. There's something wrong with the oak trees, people. There's definitely something wrong with them. I don't know what it is. They seem to be breaking really easily. Very, very dry internally. And loads of this mould over them. I know you get mould in the winter, I know, but it ain't winter. It's autumn. Now just look at the inside of that one. See that in there? Any arboriculturalists or oak tree experts to tell us what that mark is? I fear the worst, to be honest. Wait till there's a, a nice crop failure. You've got to have the chimney here. There's a great big gap up there. A nice dead one up there. I'll have to get down. I think there's dead ones over there. I might have to nip him off. And this one, I'm not sure about standing on this, to be honest. What do you think? Should I be standing on it? I might put it equidistant. This part, I don't need for light. This part is for the actual I have a spark arrestor on the stove but nevertheless I still feel it's prudent to minimize setting my own tree alight from a spark not in the winter in the summer you never know do you, you never know. I've already nipped those off up there because I was going to build a tree house up here people what do you think should that be the next project a tree house up here <gasps> My God, felt missing. Oh no, why did I come up here? I've done all that, I've done all that internal work. Now I've got to refelt that whole corner there. Better check the rest. This side looks not too bad. I've done this before. I've been up a tree doing my own tree cutting, throwing a branch down, it knocks the ladder down. And I've had to uh, scream for help for the wife. I hate this balance on here. I hate cutting upside down at my age. A, the sawdust goes in your head, 
and your eyes and your hair. And B, the blood runs out your arms so you get weak quickly. Ooh, ooh. C, it could fall on me. That's better. That leaves me a big void here for the sparks. I think that's worth doing, people. Whew. But of course, I've got this to do now. All going to be logged up, possibly going on the log burner when they've dried out. Well, it's a good job I came up here to see this patch, as that will eventually rot through. Uh, what I would normally do is pull all these up, slide it under, put a whole roll there. But just for the winter, I'm going to do that probably next spring. But just because I do not want it leaking with the wind and the rain coming up this side, I'm going to cut a piece of felt, which I just happen to have, luckily, and get that it's fixed on there. No side balance with the ladders. Quite an unusual way of doing roofing. But there you go. What you're doing your work on your own. Just leave it like that. Got enough of an overlap there, but a bit more. So, all now you see the water's going to run down here. Off of that one into this one. Well, I'm just doing a patch job here for now. So I'm going to put this mastic, gutter and roofing sealant along that top edge. It's horrible stuff, it's gunky, but it would at least seal that top edge there. You'll see what happens there. And that should seal it, and I'll put it all the way along here. So, I've got beading all the way around there. I just put that over there like this. Tap that down. Put these up here, don't forget the vibration can send the whole lot spiralling down. And then I'm just going to tack this on the outside edge. Probably watching the ceiling fall in now. So I've got it all tacked down there. And I'm just going to put mastic on the leading edge where the uh, rain's going to come down. Put ceiling all along there. And that'll push the rain up and over the top because it's a really gunky waterproof one. And that's me done till the spring, guys. Because I've also got to cut, why well, I'm not putting a new piece down is because I'm going to have to cut holes somewhere there. Probably have to get Mike to help me decide what we're going to do for the chimney for the G stove. So I've made this and built this table in the garage last night out of pallet wood and a bit of scrap block board and a bit of fancy patterning there. This is the pallet chair, which I'm going to keep in this corner because I'm probably, now I've got a lot more light coming this way, film this direction. I can also film in the corners as well. So I'm going to get some stuff up here. Might put the fire under me, it's getting a bit cool. And put some bits and pieces up there. Not sure what's going where at the moment. Well, the rain is coming in, I'm starting to wrap up warm. Can't really work outside, so I'm going to try and finish off the inside of the tackle shack for you. But don't go away, here's a fishing clip. I'm going to be working in it for a good two hours yet. A little fishing clip coming, showing you, actually, I did catch some fish, but it won today. Enjoy. We'll see you, and when you come back, you'll be impressed with what I'm going to do in there. See you in a minute. Yeah, well, it's all very well. And good for that guy in there, sitting in the comfort of that nice cosy little tackle shack he's got to send me out and do the work. He talks all about the rigs in the warm, nice cup of tea, and what have I got? This. I'm set up here at Berry Hill Fisheries Main Lake. Going to try it, hopefully, and catch a sander. But, a little bit of an edge to it. I might stay the night. Not just for sander, I might throw out for carp. I'm going to see how the sander go. It probably is going to be my last night trip, all nighter of the season before the winter really comes in. My old bones don't like the cold. I've done all that night fishing business many, many years ago and there were no bivvies then. Umbrella, piece of plastic over the top, job done, no buzzers, stay awake all night. 
anyway, luxuries now, buzzers, new batteries, new batteries down there folks. Because I'm set up ready for staying for an all nighter, I've used Mike's cart rods, got one of my older rods over there, all rigged up in here. So listen, I'm overkill for Xander, definitely, but you never know, dead baits, you could always pick a pike up as well, so it's worth having gear that's strong enough. I'm all set up in the bivvy. I put this up first, absolutely first. It's gone up because they give rain coming in at four o'clock and it is five past three. So as usual, it's the totally awesome time of starting. Anyway, dead baits, here we go. Xander do like dead baits. You can buy these on site here. They're little roach, rud, whatever they are. They're little small roach. They do fish them half. I'm gonna fish these whole. I'm looking for like one fish to salvage the trip. Um, you can obviously buy different types of fish if you wanted, but I got a bit of a bonus. What I got here, people, is my own mix of sprats, okay, that I thawed out that I would normally use for pike fishing, and these things, which are totally different. And I will try fishing one of those whole later on. I reckon they're a perfect size for small zander, you know, like three pounders and that. And these are white bait that I picked up off the beach down off, uh, off Chesil. So, they're very light to throw in these, you can't get them very far, can you? I'm figuring, and I've never fished this swim before in my life, in fact, I've never fished around this side of the lake ever. I know it's a decent swim, but I don't know about Xander, normally it's Xander's over there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out off the end of that branch down there, I could probably catapult some out that far, Sprats. I'm going to fish a you know, roach ledger on the bottom there, I'll show you the rig in a minute. And they're going to put just another one lobbed out here and another one at distance. I'm going to put a weight on that trying to get it out because I know the Xander come around the edges, but I kind of think they must be all over this lake, mustn't they? They must be all over there. I would be. Look at this setting. Absolutely stunning. I hope it's a stunning night. They give 50 mile an hour winds. Okay, hopefully you're going to see there's two different rigs, people. I'll show you these. There's somebody shooting over there. Must be duck season's open. You can see it just there. Huh, that might be better just there. Fishing line. SSG. What are they digging up there, for God's sake? These are the wire traces you can buy here at Berry Hill. No trebles. Single hooks, barbless only. Can you see that there? A single barbless hook. You get these at the fishery. Wire trace there. Feels like plastic covered wire to me. And a shot. That's all I've got because they can be really finicky. Um, definitely Xanders, or oh, they are in here. Um, in the UK, let's get bait here for you. In the UK, there's not a lot of places you can fish for Xander, I've got to be honest. Berry Hill is one of the places. So, small roach, could fish a half section. I'm going through both jaws there. Can you see that? Both jaws. It's a barbless hook. It could easily, easily come off. So what do I do? Old school again. A tiny section of rubber band just like this, just snip it off, pop it over the hook, let's get that right through, difficult to do filming with a camera on your head like that, and that should stop that coming off. Going to throw it out and just see what happens. Watch the branches look up there. When you're casting, kids especially, don't just look out there. Look where your rod's going to follow through. I'm just going to throw this out and take pot luck. Not very far at all. I sink the line like this and I just tweak it. I hope there's not going to be loads of leaves coming down and setting the buzzers off. It's important that you're direct contact to your bait because as you stand, they can be very, very picky and twitchy. They're not like a pike. You know, they pick up and run a long way with it. They will just often just mess around with it and almost. So you've got to be have a sort of fairly a fairly sensitive setup there. I may not even use let's put the buzz on. I may not even use Mike's weights here. I think they might be a little bit heavy somehow. I'm just trying to feel them, I reckon they might be a bit heavy. I'll try one first. See, that's pulling back on that swan shot already. Tighten up here. You can do it 
and balance up with a double handled reel. If you have a single handle, the weight of the handle will keep revolving the spool and it might pull out too far. I'd like to be tight to the bait there so I can feel the bait on the bottom. And then just, that's loud, isn't it? That's enough. I think we're okay there. And you can put it on the bait runner. Very, very light setting on the bait runner here. Adjust again. That wind is going to be a pain on me. Right, second rig. Hopefully you can see this because I want to cast a lot further. I've got a standoff weight here. Just an Arsley bomb. About six, eight inches, probably eight and ten inches. Eight or ten inches, I guess, of a drop here to a swivel. Slides up and down like this. To the same trace there. And I keep the lead look shorter than the bait. Same principle, that's going to give me casting weight. But when it's laying down on the, on the lake bed like this, I want the Xander to be able to move a bit without feeling that weight first. So we rig this one up exactly the same way. Tempted to use a sprat, really tempted. Through both jaws. A little piece of, tiny piece, look, all it takes just a little tiny piece, like that of rubber, until we get the fish, it stays on the hook anyway. I'm trying to get that one on so you can see it at the same time, and there we go, pop it right through. Hopefully not my finger. They are digging something major up there, I can hear it. So there we go, now this one, <clears throat> I'm going to wang out there. This one is totally an experiment, people. I'm using that tree as a guide because I've got something else to do in a second. And... Sink the line. See, the wind's pushing this way, so I'm only pushing the line over where I sunk the other one. I just jiggle it around like this. Back we go. But that guy in that tackle shack's nice and warm by now. That temperature's going to drop here tonight. I'll try these bobbins and mics, but if I get a drop run, I won't be too happy. Now the fish just ran under this bush. I'm going to have to cast it sideways, like they're going to cast the rod under that side. Cannot go overhead there. But sometimes I know predators do like, especially pike, overhangs like this. I don't know if it gives them shade or what. So obviously sprats like this, I can just scatter around on the wind 10 or 20 feet out. Even, even, even half sections are, I'll put out there. Watch out for the seagulls. If I was fishing for pike, I would be putting these out whole, but I'm going to do them into sections like this. Because the Xander here can run from three to sort of seven, eight, nine pounds and bigger. But they tend to like sections of baits, although I'm fishing whole ones. I'm hoping for a slightly bigger fish should I get a run at all. So I'm going to cut all these up, just like this. Don't really need to cut this white bait up, I mean these are neat baits. Like that. I strongly suggest cleaning your scissors after using sprats, this smell is unbelievable. So these are white bait, just fished off the beach, that's a sprat head. You can see they're nice little size ones. Now we'll be trying one later. See if we can get a fish first. Now these I can catapult out. Or think about this. I'm sure the Xander are attracted like pike to lots of small fish feeding. So I've got some ground bait. We're going to mix some ground bait with the sprats. So the little fish will nibble away. Okay, that vibrations will attract hopefully a Xander or a predator coming in there. And then they won't eat this, the small ones. The bigger Xander will probably come in and hoover this up. And that's the sort of theory I've got, is ground bait mixed together with these, but sent out using one of these. This is like a missile. 
you fill it full of your intended bait and you cast it out and it aerodynamically it drops like this and goes boom and lets the bait out. So therefore I've got a nice clump of bait going out there in one go. And then I can sort of put my bait out on top of that. So tip these little kiddies out for a second. Mix a bit of ground bait in there as well like this. Just my way of doing it people. Look I do sea fishing so this is like what we call chumming but I just it's something I've, 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 I've put sections in before but to me sections and ground bait's got to be the way to go surely surely all right then we put that into our missile holder here only half fill it that's all you want to do just get some samples like that in there I'm not going to get troubled by seagulls, I dare say. And just a tip, make sure that clip area is able to load like that. Otherwise it bursts everywhere. It's ready to send out now. People, <laughs> it hasn't got dark yet, it's exactly four o'clock. Go in the tackle shop says, it's due rain at four o'clock, Graham, better get your bivvy up. And just peeping around here, it is as black as you want. I'd be very surprised the wind's picking up, the clouds are just crash, barreling over, picking up with the wind, that's a squall coming. Guys over there, umbrella, it's got to come, it's got to come big time. Oh, it's coming in the trees here. I can hear it. I can actually hear it, lad. Here it comes, here it comes. Get it! I just cut it a little bit fine. Wowee. It's a special art put in the plastic so it runs, look over over the tips of your shoes so you're wet all night you just put them outside it's really sensible well i'm hoping this lot's going to blow through a little bit lighter over the back well the rain stopped that's something i've had beeps i had little registrations of bites on there but it's when the wind comes up with a storm coming through and the rain picks up and all that business. It's just, I can see from here, they're not runs, they're not takes from the Xander. And I don't know if Xanders, do they like rain? I don't know. I was told they don't like hard, frosty weather. Pike do, they don't. So it's relatively mild, but it's loads of low pressures coming in. So who knows? The rain has stopped. That's the main thing. I can, I can venture outside. Hopefully everything all dries out. Well, everything is dripping, including those poor guys over there with one small umbrella and I think an awful lot of wet gear. You can see they had the wind come through, it's, it's moved the bobbins, but they haven't gone you know, up or down, they've just been moved an inch or two. What I did learn, and I think I've got to adjust these, these buzzers are only cheap buzzers, but they've got, I think they've got two settings. So in other words, if you can imagine the paddle on the wheel that trips between the sort of sensor, if you like, it goes beep, beep, like this. A little wheel goes around and breaks the sort of sensor. That's how it used to be. Maybe it's not changed now. If you've got, say, that much, here's the bobbin, there's the bite here. It goes up here. It can either go, I believe, beep, 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 or you set it and it goes for the same distance from here to here. Beep, beep. So the slower beat with more space between it I feel is the one to use when it's windy like this and rain and squalls coming through and that way you don't get false registration all the time. It's got to be a long pull before you actually hear that first beep. I might, now it's stopped. I think I might venture out and see if I can set those up. Ah, that's better. Horrendous rain, it's clearing up a bit now. Gotta watch this board's not slippery. 
So, see what I mean? I've moved that far to get that beat. Watch. It felt quite tight. Now it's moved. So, is there a setting here? That's volume. Ah. No, it doesn't seem to be. Ah, oh, that's a better one, yeah. So in other words, that's got to move quite away before I get the beep. I think that's got it set. And the same one assumes for these. can't tell you how, uh, how it feels to just get that first take. I was actually pretty despondent, I've got to tell you people. It's not in the net yet, it's not in the net yet. Get in there. We have our Xander of the trip, people. There he is. Come back here. You can even unhook him in the net. Let's take a look at him. There's the hook. Look, he's hooked, and I've, I can tell you now that I've still got that piece of rubber on there, so I can use it again. Oh yeah, nice fish. That's a beauty. Fat. My goodness, he's got a fat belly to him. You can see how narrow he is at the top of the head. Predatory. His eyes are pointing forwards. That's a pretty nice fat one there. Let's get him straight back. Let's just get it back. I don't need to drop the microphone in the water. There he is. Nice sound of people. Oh, that's a result. There's not many places that you can go and catch these fish. Berry Hall is one of them. He's let him recover. Oh, don't even need to let him recover. He's gone. Well, well, well. That was worth all that ground bait with sprats and white bait, I feel. Well, sun's coming out. It's making my face, it's making my face go red here. Well, smile on Graham's face now with the sander there. And now obviously I'm looking at the bobbins waiting for one. That just went straight up and that was so bizarre. I thought, I wonder if I want a blank, you know, I just got that blanky sort of feeling about it. And then as I was filming, hopefully I've got it all on camera, literally it just, the bobbin went straight up and it hooked itself, I should think. I just grabbed the rod, it's right in front of me. Positive take and not on a half segment, that was on a whole roach. Just hooked in the scissors. Perfect that was. The other thing is, a lot of time with Xander, look, I'm no Xander expert, I just go fishing every now and then one blunders into me. But low light level, night predator, slightly coloured water you can catch through the daytime, mostly dawn and dusk. I don't know about dawn, I don't even think I've done any dawn Xander fishing, it's mostly in the dusk. I will be staying into the dark today, or tonight. Beautiful evening now, after I've had a heavy rainstorm. And I feel there's every chance I may, I may just get another one. I may get another one, it'll be a result. But once that sun starts going down, good chance. Normally hour before, hour after sunset, that's the peak time. People think they go all through the night. Now I'm no Xander expert, as I say. If there's a Xander expert out there, tell me, do they feed right through the night? Look, you just think barbel food, all the way through the night they go crazy. No, they go dusk, you know, into dark, first hour or so, maybe a couple of hours, then it seems to go dead, and then they tell me at dawn. But who knows? Every expert's different, aren't they? Man, what a spot this burial fisheries is. When it's nice, it's perfect. Especially when there's no planes going over. Just check this scene out, people.
result, people. I'm kind of surprised. To be honest, I haven't had one down here under these bushes. This one was the three line with just a swan trot, not the uh, one I cast out of distance, which I've recast incidentally. And I'm going to cast this one out again, maybe 30 yards. Sink that line. So it's just got the weight of that shot. There's a lot more leaves on the surface now, unfortunately. So hopefully the wind doesn't come up anymore. And that now to give you guys dusk, lights going down, 10 to 5 that one took out. But that bank along there normally fishes well for sand, as does that bank, the other side of the island. It could be that more anglers fish there because it's closer to the car park, they don't want to come all the way around here. It also could be the fact, and I've mentioned this before with bream fishing, the anglers match fish those two stretches as well. The more ground bait goes in there, the more small fish go in there, the more the predators going to know that. So it's not just the regular fish that are going to know where the feed's going in, those predators capitalise on that as well. So this side, I figure I might be lucky to get that sand if I get another one. Possibly a result, I may be wrong, they could be all over the lake, everywhere. I'm sure they do move around, but yeah, you know, my gut feeling is a better sand of fishing along those two banks there, but we'll find out anyway. It's just starting to cloud over a little bit again. Beautiful blue sky here, but I can see it might possibly be another batch of rain coming in there. Nothing on the inside one, just the one fish here, and I've just lost or missed one on the uh, distance ledger with the whole bait out there, so I might wind it in, check it, it hasn't been pulled off, and recast it. See, now I feel there must, must be a better chance of another sander, because up here, the sun's now gone behind the cloud, so whereas the light would be lost a lot sooner, maybe half an hour extra dark time, as it were, over in the shadow line on the other bank over there, behind this island, here, I've got it a lot later, so I figure I sort of lose half an hour of a good time. But now it's pretty well even low light level. And I've got these bobbins, plastic ones, which are very, very light, and they give me a longer drop up here, so the fish can move all the way up there before he feels any resistance, whereas these, it's only quite short. They're fine for bolt rigging for carp, because when it goes up there, they hook themselves anyway. But for this, you know, I think you need something with no resistance. So I've now got three bottle tops. I've got to pick up, boys. It's tipping down with rain. I don't know if the fish is there or not. It's there. I don't know how long I'm going to keep out in this rain, but I've got a fish on. Oh man, I hope this camera's going to stay going. It's not in a waterproof case and I don't need to get soaked. Oh, I'm getting soaked. Come on, good fish, good fish. It was a bit bigger than the last one, I may be wrong. Just ease off the rain for a little while, just if I can get him in. Oh, let's get the net. One more fish would be so nice. Oh, he's pulling, he's pulling. Now he's about the same size. I mean, I'm on carp rods, don't get me wrong. Let's get him in, let's get him in, get him in, get him in. Too late, he's dived the wrong way. Two Xander. Look at that, he fell out. He's got teeth everywhere. This one's about, what do you think? It's not quite, I think it's as long. He's as long, but he's not quite as fat. He's gonna go five pounds. Beautiful. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what's happening? Two sander. Open her. Open the bail, open the bail. Just like a number 49 bus. Two coming at once. Now this one's dropped it, boys. It's coming down big time the rain. I cannot afford to get soaked if I'm gonna stay the night. It's getting quick. Oh. Wow. Let's get this camera dried off and get me dried off. Second Xander and another take on that one. Had I been sitting here, I probably would have got it. And now the heavens have opened. Well, the changing weather this year has been absolutely appalling, I've got to say. 
But listen, people, do not get wet, especially youngsters. If you're going to stay the night, don't get wet. Try and dry your hair off with whatever. Take a spare towel with you, which I've got. Yes, it's filthy, but I can stay dry. You do not want to get wet and cold during the night. You get hypothermia, you can get a chill. As my grand said, if you get wet and damp head, you'll get a chill on your kidneys. Now, how you can get your head wet and get a chill on your kidneys is beyond me. But she said it was right, she said it was true, and I believed her. I do not need a chill on my kidneys. Look at it. Prime Xander time, and his skies are opening up. Bit of a mess, people. Wet. Hopefully the hairs, because you must have a perfect look. And they do that head nodding, don't they? Have you noticed presenters? They do all this. And they absolutely accentuate every single word they can. Do you know what they remind me of? Those nodding dogs that you used to get in the back of the car doing this. That's what they remind me of. I just do what I do. I'm not there to uh, present myself. I'm just trying to relay stuff to you guys so you can catch a few more fish. I've got some customers coming here. I want to go and show them to you. One's quite unusual. Somebody will know what they are. Who knows what they are? Three in a row, just like you get in a fun fair. Beeper, beeper, beeper. Guys, look, look, just creeping off. I've got another pickup. I don't know if I'm over my other one or under it. I think I'm under it. I'm going to wind down and whack it. We're on. I'm on again. Oh my god, look at the size of that rainstorm up there. Another sander on. They definitely must be getting on my ground bait now. All those sprats. It is bite time. But I'm so pleased to come to another side of a lake I've never fished before and actually catch fish. I might stay the night. I still might stay the night. It's horrendous weather. Look at the size of that black cloud. I don't want him crossing the other line, he's ever so close. I think I've got him. And the net, of course, is four miles away. Here he comes, here he comes. Same size, maybe a tad smaller. I'll tell you what, he's going well, this one. He's certainly going well. When Desander are not the world's greatest fighters, has to be said, Get in, boy. He's got it wrapped around his fin. Another nice fish. Now, you'll probably be able to see this is like the third fish, and I'm getting baits back. And there's not literally a tooth mark on that, so they just suck it straight back. I think one thing to do when the fish is like this, boy, is get it straight back out there again. The wind's going to catch this one a bit, but. I don't think it matters too much. Sink that line. I'm trying to get around those leaves there so I don't get any false bites. But it seems like those other two fish are not being funny, but can you see the difference my bobbins must have made? Two takes, two fish, lighter bobbins, and a different drop back. Pretty sure it's those light bobbins that's doing it. So, out there, great, well, I've got the, uh, all those loose feed that I put out, the white bait and the sprats and the ground bait out there. This kitty, nothing, so I'm tempted to throw him out there as well. There's nothing in the edge there. All right, fresh bait. I've got two left and I'm down to sprats. I've got to watch those trees there. That overhang. And that one cast off, that's good. So I'm now down to one. This is the last roach. Three Xander, cannot grumble at all, folks. I must have had about six takes. It wasn't until I uh, went for the larger bobbins that it makes a bit of a difference. 
Ah, oh, it's dry out there. No more rain, please, ladies. Light's going away now. You won't see much with this camera, so I'm going to have to get the floodlight out in a minute. Possibly the other camera as well. <sighs> Let's put this tacking away. It's going to get. If that rain comes, I'm going to get soaked. I feel witching hour. Six thirty up to seven o'clock. I think we might get one more out of this. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure, people. I think I've actually got the entire lake to myself. I've seen everybody else over there pack up with the rain. Can you blame them really? But they're missing the fishing. <laughs> there folks is a very pretty sight. She's got the owls coming now. Somebody's picked that one up. That's a long distance, or relatively long distance ledgering one. I've had two or three that have actually, he's still there. I'm gonna take the bobbin off of this one, guys. Now I'm watching the line. And you can see the line there, just coming on. I've got the bait arm open, so I'm going to wind down and strike this guy straight away. Yeah, come on. It's right up on the surface, it seems to be. And that's where I piled all that bait in. As you can see, nothing on the right hand side there. Come on. Here he comes, here <laughs> Number four. Three so called a bit of fun fishing, people. Just another pick up, people. On again. What a session. Even better, the wind is still right off. I've just been out and broken up a load of bread and put some bread out there as well on the top, just in case there's a carp. And the way this weather's panned out, it's been strange. I think I'm going to pick up my other line. Try and get you a bit, a bit closer for you. I think one's a bit, a bit bigger. I think he's a bit bigger. In fact, he's not fishy today. He's fishy the night. Sort of reflective effect on him. That is a spanker. Up he comes, up he comes. That's a nice fish. I think you'll agree. Well pleased with that one, people. There he goes. He looks like he's a seven. 
seven plus a nice one. The thing is guys, I don't have any more uh, natural dead baits left. The sprats are going to have to go out, but if I don't get a take on the sprats, out go the cart rods. Because if this stays flat, I'm staying all night. session. Well I hope you enjoyed that little bit of fishing. Look, not every day is an epic day. I'm getting a bit damp. I've got the heater on here. Don't, don't, don't laugh. It's got the electric fire in it because I have not yet got rigged up this little beauty. I feel I am due an unboxing before I go any further because I'm going to have to measure up the area. So if you've watched Mike's TA Outdoors and you watched our pallet cabin, the huge, huge, massively successful pallet cabin series, which had several million, one, one film alone had, I think, I think over nine million views. Can't be bad. We used, and it's really good, and I'm really impressed with them, is the good old G stove. But this one is, they call this one, oh, good job I've got. This is a G stove heat XL. I love that word heat. I love the word heat. I'm not great with cold weather. I really don't like cold weather. So let's check this puppy out and put it out and see what it looks like so I can measure up and see what sort of size we've got to deal with here. This one, I can tell you now, having used the regular size one, is going to heat up very, very well in here. In fact, I will probably have to tune it right down. I'm going to be grateful for it in the winter. Give me a second, guys, and I'm going to get this one worked out. I need Mike's help because there's bits here that I don't know how it works. In here is all the piping. So this is the best bit, which is the oven. It goes up on the top there. I'm going to leave these other tubes because Mike can come and help me cut a hole in the roof there. <clears throat> this one's a spark arrestor there. I know that's a spark arrestor. But which order they go in, I don't know. It's just to give me a guide and these fold out. Whether I'm going to get space. So yeah, I am actually. So I'm going to have to cut quite a big piece out here. If you guys can see from here. Light it inside there. You can put your plate saucepans there. This gets very hot. That's the water heater there. And there's the oven, which I was basically just trying to put together upside down and then all the way up. Okay, I'm gonna go and get my camera floodlight because I'm losing light here big time. As you can see, it's pretty disgusting out there. Not very nice at all. I'll get my camera in front of the light and I'll show you what I have been doing while you've been watching that fishing sequence. Well, people, this is the totally awesome unveiling of the Tackle Shack. A lot of work's gone into it. I've enjoyed doing it. You guys have been away. You did no work, did you? Especially Smith at the back. You've been watching that fishing film just now while I finished off. Wait till you see what I've done. I haven't rigged out all my camera stuff yet. I've just finished the basic outlay. I've got a lot more to do in here, a lot more stuff to put up. Got the G-stove up, which I'm well pleased with. It's got to be fitted, slabbed, tiled, bricked, chimney cut, loads to do regarding that. I'll wait till Mike comes up. He'll have to help me with that. He knows all about those bushcrafty, stovey things. But this is what I've done. I think you'll be shocked. I'm using, I'm using just this camera floodlight at the moment. So I don't know what the light's going to be like till I get a few films made in here with you know three or four or five different cameras and different setups but we'll be able to bounce a light off somewhere off that white ceiling you know maybe up there i can bounce a light off there as well so let me take you on a tour of our fabulous tackle shack here we have the wonderful g stove yet to be fitted but basically it's in its position where i'm going to have it we've got a little fishy here this is an unusual one somebody gave me 
up there you might be able to see that it actually goes the other way up I think this way there's the fish like a sort of tropical angel fish as a bracket that you could put a bulb in there obviously you have a light fitting with it I've just hung it up there for whatever I found some decals so I'm starting to stick some decals over here on the glass I've cleaned all the glass off check out the general lookout of this boys what do you think look at that I'm pretty impressed with it I'm gonna go right up there for you that's where I'm gonna have one camera mounted up there I'm gonna be working over here camera shots will be shooting that direction possibly about here well pleased with the brickwork all this imitation beam work what do you think I think it's pretty cool this is a real boys fishing shack it's a man cave it's whatever you want it to be it's a bolt hole to get away from the wife I've got an electric fire down there so I'm on a cheat at the moment and there's some of the stuff some of the goodies we'll talk about that as another time wow look at that one I know all about these things trust me I've got here in this corner an antique chair I've cleaned up varnished original tapestry with wicker work and this is going to be wait for this why would I want two chairs ah oh, I wonder if Graham is going to have a guest speaker every once in a while and that would be interesting for you guys wouldn't it and over here a custom made with a nice little bit of deco decal I'll put a bit more on there oh yes he's got that organized pretty well yeah I see we all know what's going to go down in here time Michael and there's three it's going to be mine Michael's and the guest beer there I made this out of wait for it pallet wood last night in the garage and a bit of block board I cut up and here I just did the scallop shape by putting paint pots on there you may have seen some of our DIY shows that I've done before and the pH de resistance of course is the pallet chair which is about two years old now and we used to keep outside the pallet cabin so that's going to be over here my beauties the seat of power I'm pretty pleased with all this the way it's come up I tell you what, I'm gonna have some fun in here you guys hopefully gonna tag along as well ah yes this is what you call a film studio for fishermen built by a fisherman I'm gonna enjoy working in here hopefully get some interesting bits of tackle as well for you guys to see and I am aiming hopefully we might get the occasional guest drop in especially if I get somewhere I could put a little beer cooler or something over there couldn't I could do and of course you can dine here as well because we've got that 4G stove we can do baking we can do cooking we can cook fish in here the world as they say is our proverbial oyster thanks for watching the totally awesome fishing show hope for you enjoyed this segment of building and renovating this complete surf shack it was Mike's old surf shack you can see what it looks like now just look back to the earlier one that I did and you'll realize that it was a spider infested oh, I don't know what it was I'm sure it's gonna get spider infested later but once I get organized in here we're gonna have some good tackle talks we'll see you next time don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit the like button uh, here on TA we do at least try to push the boundaries build different things do things differently hit Mike's TA Outdoors give him some support it's a father and son combo both channels TA Outdoors TA Fishing we'll see you guys next time